Hi, everyone. Good morning. It's Susan. Welcome to this show. I love the fact that you guys are here, that you're waiting. And yes, these are live. Uh, I'm Susan Winter, best-selling author and relationship expert. You are joining our open conversation on breadcrumbing. And I hope you are all well and safe today. And I thank you so much for your participation. I like to see where you're from. So if you get a chance, just type in your city and state. And uh, today we are talking about breadcrumbing. I'm picking up a couple comments from the community page. Joshua Mack, I don't know if you're watching today, but thank you. You were excited about this. So you guys, this is all under the banner of bad behavior. This is like there are a million terms of bad behavior. And I think we live in an unfortunate time period where we've had to devise these terms so that we can isolate bad behavior and actually know that it's not okay. MK from New York. Yes. London, England. Uh, Reunion Island of the Austin, Texas. Hi, Nicholas. Austin, Manchester, England. New York, Barcelona. Lake Rayburn, Texas. California. Bay Area, California. My best girlfriend lives there. Switzerland. UK. Maryland. Montreal, Quebec. Oh, my goodness. I've never been there. It's so close to New York. Do you know I have, well, I was in the airport once, um, but I've never really seen the city. And that's that's one of my things. Um, Cairns, Australia, I have been there. And I hope I'm saying this properly. They told me to say Cairns. Okay, uh, lockdown is eased, but they're hanging in there. Okay, Sacramento, Sweden, Stockholm. I did my head though. Yep, okay. Lithuania, oh, hi, I know these names. This is wonderful. Janesville, uh, Iowa, Miami, Florida, Brazil, Hungary. I want you all to see, part of the reason I do this, and I'm sorry I take off the glasses because I hate I hate having the glasses on. I need to do it for the reading. But I, I do this because I want you to see that we have a large reach. When, when you have messages where you're trying to help people and have those followers help each other, as was happening at the top of the chat, um, I had two people conversing and helping each other. And one of the individuals said, thanks, I've got, I, I really need all the help I can get. This is a beautiful thing. We want to have this happen. So this is a safe space where we can come together and talk about these issues. Now, you guys, I started something new and you might've noticed now that there are advertisements and I want to tell you why I avoided that for years. I never wanted to put you through it. And then I had people writing me saying, Susan, like, this is really silly. Why don't you advertise? I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. No, I don't want to do that. And then I realized I get about a half a million views a month. You guys, that's silly. That's like having a stock that's got great dividends. You're going like, no, I won't take that money. I'll just throw this away. No, I'll just throw it away. So forgive me for that. But part of that allows me to do something. And I don't know if you know how to do this, but there's something called Super Chat. And you can, if you like, create a comment here that is highlighted and for sure, <laughs> I'm going to find it. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to start with the breadcrumbing. I'm going to give you my analysis. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to look just for those of you who are talking about breadcrumbing. And because I know you want this and no matter what my topic is, it's like, yeah, but my boyfriend broke up with me. We are going to be answering individual questions in the last five or 10 minutes of the show. I want to be here serving your needs, not mine, yours. So because this is on breadcrumbing, let's try to keep our commentary to this and then I'll let you know when we can let it rip, okay? Um, Isabel, thank you for all the hearts. That's beautiful. Um, Jared, okay, uh, let's see. You're in the posh part of London. They're writing to each other. I love this. So you all know what breadcrumbing is, right? So the actual term is where, I guess it's from, you know, the fairy tales that we tell each other, the little stories you tell children, but it's where a person leaves enough bits of interest to make you think that you have a possibility of being with them. Now, it could be that, let's say, let's take a scenario. You meet somebody, you chat them up, you think you've got a report, you exchange numbers. And so you decide, hey, uh, let's get together sometime. I'd like to. And the person goes, yeah, I'd love to. You go out on a date. You think it's good. They say they'd like to see you again. So you text them. They don't respond. You text them again. They don't respond. Suddenly, they come back and say, oh, I've just been so busy. I've been thinking about you. Let's get together. But they don't. Or you've slept with somebody. And they lead you on. 
They don't tell you yes. They don't tell you no. Perhaps you want to go in a different direction. Perhaps you don't want it to be recreational. You'd like to be building a relationship. And so you are always encouraged through the breadcrumber's attention to think you have a shot. Now, I want to be clear, not all of this is intentional. Not every person out there is rubbing their hands together going, boy, I'm going to destroy them psychologically. There are people who do this because they're genuinely confused. They're whimsical. They are attracted to you one moment and they're not the next. And they are, you know, suddenly like they want to see you and then, oh, they see that one and that one's more interesting. But they don't want to lose you. You see, breadcrumbing is the precursor to orbiting, which is another thing. Orbiting is where somebody collects you, or we could say puts you in their stable. They bench you. It's all the same, different terms for different aspects of it. But what it means is that they gain your attention, and then they keep you interested by giving you just enough. And the, the goal is to have you available when they want you. And maybe even not for anything other than to flirt with or to feel that they're attractive. So this is why we want to be watching for the signs of breadcrumbing. Because this is live, I am going to take a look at a few of these things. You guys are talking to each other. You're telling me where you're from. Okay, breadcrumbing isn't about you. Remember that. Thank you, Yuri. Okay, um, they have to sort out their issues. It's a reflection of them. It's true. I describe breadcrumbing as... They give you just enough air to breathe, but not enough oxygen to survive. That's how it feels when it's done to you. And every time you finally realize what's going on as you know a novice dater and you're like, oh my God, this is breadcrumbing. When you walk away, they feel it. And then they come back again with a sweeter offer to re-engage you. And it's it's not that it's purposeful or going anywhere. It's just some people love the attention. You know, human beings love to be adored. We love to be loved. And there are people that will breadcrumb you to put you in orbit to stay attracted to them as a just in case. You're a backup plan. Maybe, maybe. If times get rough, you know, oh, I haven't heard from this person for a while. I feel he or she is slipping away. So let me just give them a little nugget of attention. That way you keep them engaged. And one of our greatest qualities that we have as human beings is that we have a sense of hope. We have faith, we have belief. And so oftentimes this will work against us because we are seeing what we want to see. We are convincing ourselves that, oh my goodness, look, they really do like me. Or oh, maybe they really were busy. Oh, I understand. No, no, he's busy this weekend. Oh no, she, she really isn't going back to her boyfriend. Oh, she's really getting a divorce. <laughs> you know, so the breadcrumbing is to keep you engaged. How do you know it's happening to you? Well, first clue, you feel like something is off. They seem to encourage your communication, but they give you, well, here's another term I'm going to give you. They gray rock the uh, information they give back, meaning they, they give you just a, like a perfunctory response. Like, yes, be well, talk later. Oh, the one I love, I learned this from a guy. Okay, this is great. Um, I learned this. He did one of those talk soon, talk soon. What does that mean? Talk soon, be in touch. This is great. This was great. And I thank everyone that has taught me these things. Let's see what you guys have to say. Any questions about breadcrumbing? Oh, the old breadcrumbing move, another form of energy and emotion vampire people. Um, so I know you guys want to hate them. We just have to isolate who they are and move on. How would you handle something like this? If you realize somebody's breadcrumbing you, if you are clear in your intention that you'd like to move forward, I like being direct. That is a method that works for me. Maybe it won't work for you. Find a method that works. But I suggest that what you do is in your own dispositional way that you let them know that you see what's going on. You don't have to be cruel, don't have to be nasty, and just say, I'm interested in you. It doesn't seem like you have sufficient interest or that you're free. So, you know, let's call it, let's let's just say that, that it is what it is. Okay, nice to meet you, best wishes, whatever. And you move on. Now, anticipate, they'll probably try to get you back. 
And sometimes this looks exciting. You might do it the first time and say, oh, they really are. So no, I'm so sorry. I was really just so busy at work. I'm slammed. We've got this new project. Oh my God, my boss is terrible, blah, blah, blah. And they might tell you those things. And you think, well, maybe. And you go back in and you give it a test. Do it once. If you really think they have merit, do it once. But understand that it is a holding pattern that people want to put you in. It's not always conscious, but for you, it's uncomfortable. And that's where you need to be clear about what you want and let them know what you're looking for. And if they are undetermined at this time, it is best for you to move on. Nobody's hurt. You just aren't on the same page. Let me see what you guys have to say. Do you have any stories about this you want me to take a look at? Let's see what's going on here. Is it possible to breadcrumb a breadcrumber back? Yeah, it's called game. And if you want to do it and you have a disposition to do it, you can play game in return. Remember, they think they've got you. So you've got to show them they don't have you. And then you have to, just when you think they're losing hope, you give them a little incentive. Uh, <sighs> games are exhausting. And my feeling on that is that we get involved in far too many games that are not necessary and just get in our way, but you can game the gamer. Remember, the one move gamers never make is honest and straightforward. They don't do it. They got to keep you guessing and keep you off your balance. And if you are playing direct and clean and clear without malice, without hatred, just saying it like it is, impartial, diplomatic, uh, strategic about your information, you let them know that you know, and then you don't do anything. It kind of puts the ball back in their court, and it's fun to see how they handle that. Okay, leave them. It's not about you, really. Save your precious energy. Yep, okay. Um, if someone, hang on here, guys, hang on. Uh, if someone initiates contact 90% of the time, but it's by text only, is it breadcrumbing? Okay, that's difficult. I had to read your text messages to see what they say. There are people, I have girlfriends in their 20s who don't use the phone to call. I had a long conversation with a girlfriend today and I was so tired. And then I do the auto dictation and got the, the words it comes up with. It's like, what? What did you say that I said? Some people don't um, phone. If you're saying, do they never see you? If the text messages you get indicate a desire to see you, but they don't see you, you are being breadcrumbed. They'd have to give you valid reason. I'm out of the country, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see. Now, you guys, I want to see if somebody knows how to do super chat. Do any of you know how to do that? I'd like to see if it comes up. I hate all those games. Let's just leave each other alone, please. Yes, that is a very normal response to this. Okay, my ex, Edward says, my ex told me that she didn't want to work it out at the start of April, then turned around and wished me a happy birthday on the 29th, then had the nerve to text call me a week later. Now, Edward, just to be fair, I haven't heard the entire story. Only you know if your ex is capable of breadcrumbing. Perhaps your ex is feeling remorse if she broke up with you. Perhaps she's thinking, or, um, let's, yeah, it's a she. Perhaps she's thinking, um, you know, I really don't want to look like I don't remember the birthday. So birthdays, I got to tell you guys, though, as a side note, birthdays are a hard thing to handle. If people have been broken up with and they're trying a no contact, they call me belaboring how to handle the birthday thing. Or they call me because they're worried about, oh, my God, they're in a hot spot for coronavirus. This was somebody I loved. You know, do I contact them? So again, my answer to that is always, how will that affect you? Don't just think of the short run, think of the long run. If you can handle having contact with one of these people and reach out to them, then that's okay. Sometimes breakups, Edward, are not clean. People have residual feelings. If they cared for you once, they don't always die down. Sometimes the person cared for you and you guys were just going in different directions. Um, they couldn't see a future with you. They changed their mind. You changed your mind. Who you were to each other changed. So the relationship ended. I'm sure you tried. What we have to look at here is if they reach out to you. Now, if she continues to reach out to you, then you'll know you're being breadcrumbed. But again, it would have to have the underlying message would have to read, I'm trying to get your attention again, romantically, not 
I'm trying to be a civil person, diplomatic. We were involved, and I know you're, I, I just have to acknowledge your birthday. So there's a slight difference there. Okay, let's see where we are now. Oh boy, they jumped, okay. Uh, text me on late night. Okay, so uh, somebody Greek here says he would text me and meet me only at night. Now, <laughs> come on. Okay, never wanted to do anything with me or talk about anything but sex. Okay, so did any of you guys watch the movie The Irishman? It was like incredibly long, right? Um, but you hear Robert De Niro saying, okay, it is what it is. And sometimes, as pat as that answer may sound, it is what it is. I specialize in creating new forms of relationships that work for the individual. Not every individual wants a traditional relationship. There are people who want a certain type of component. The rub here is that what this partner wants from you sounds like it's not the complete requirement that you need. This is a point of discussion and you have to see the difference. If somebody is only calling you for booty calls, that's what they want you for, or that's what they think you will allow them to do with you. So we have to ask, did you ever state to them what you're looking for? Were you clear on your boundaries? So, you know, so I had a client tell me, he's so nice. And he told me the other day, he said, I've always wanted to be kind to people. Why would she be so abusive to me? And she knows she's abusive. And the horrible answer is that she does it because you allow it. I'm not blaming you. I do not know the story in detail. But remember, for all of these things, we've got two people. So what we're trying to do today is give you tools to assess what's really happening in real time so that you can diplomatically express yourself and extricate yourself from a situation that would hold you captive, put you in a loop and make you wonder why they don't love you. Why don't they want me? Why don't they love me? Okay. This is, this is so you guys are smart and savvy daters. Okay. Okay. Mackenzie writes, I don't think any woman should put up with breadcrumbs. We are way too precious for that. We deserve total presence and a hundred percent. John Gallagher is saying something to me and I missed part of it. Um, Men, women, if somebody wants a relationship, you need to be clear about that. And we are here learning how to discern the difference between actual attention. So here's another factor. And I know I've said this before. Um, what if it's hard for you to tell? You're on the precipice right now, not knowing, are they breadcrumbing me or are they really just busy? Because that is a point that we have to figure out. Normally, if you have verbal agreements to get together, like, oh yeah, we'll do this. Now that's very casual for some people. I like to be specific. That way I get a read on, are they really interested? And I like you guys to be specific, men, women, both of you. So if you say, let's get together, how's Tuesday? Love to see you on Tuesday. I've got this and that going on. Love to invite you. Would you care to join me, right? And then they say, ah, oh, no, listen, I can't Tuesday and they don't make a counter offer, they're probably not interested. So if somebody cancels on you or if they decline, if they're interested, they will make a counter offer, but I'm available Wednesday or Thursday. How's that? That's an interested person. Okay, anything else on breadcrumbing? Do you guys have anything to say here? Has anybody used Super Chat yet? I wanna see if this works. That's gonna be very interesting. Um, Jenny writes, hi, Susan, uh, tried online dating. Guys show interest for a month and they breadcrumb and it fizzles out. 32, still single, don't want kids. Uh, what, according to you, is the best place setting to find a guy? Oh, boy. Uh, honestly, I like real in real life. I know we can't do this right now because this is being recorded during the coronavirus. Um, I I hate to say this, but I've, I'm a lazy social person. I don't drink or take drugs or go out or anything like that. And... Um, and I think too, I, you know, I'm kind of a private person and I work a lot. So going to the gym was my outlet or cultural activities. I've met people at concerts. I've met people at lectures. I enjoy going to where people, oh, 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 Taylor Ellis. Hi, this is the first one. What do you have to say to me? 
This is, I think, a super chat thing. Taylor, what do you want to say? Now that you've got my attention, I thank you, but let me answer your question. This is so exciting. I'm very new to this, guys. You might notice I have my technological uh, challenges. Um, so here's the thing I like in real life. And the reason I've liked the gym, one, it's something I do for myself. I don't go there to hunt. I go there to work out. Oh, this is so exciting. You guys, I'm loving this. Uh, Cassiano, hello. Um, thanks for all your help, Susan. Can you answer my question from the top of the chat later? I'll tell you what, I have about five minutes at the end of this. I'm not sure what your exact question was. Once we go dark and this cuts off, write me again or write me on the community page. Um, that way I'll see it for sure. And I will answer your question. Okay. Thank you so much. This is really cool. <laughs> oh God, where was I? I like to go to the gym because I can see people in how they relate to each other. Sometimes you can do this in a work setting if you don't have any HR um, restrictions on how you relate to each other, that you could actually date somebody. You get to see how they interact with other people. They get to see how you interact with them. You can build a conversation slowly. That is my preferred method. It's great if you have a social group that's all the same. Okay, let's see. Um, why would a man say he wants a relationship then act like he isn't in one? Taylor, have to have a more detailed conversation with you. Yuri, thank you for thinking I'm cute. Um, let's see. The church girl or the highly materialistic, their expectations can be too high. They stay super single. Okay, so now you guys are just chatting with each other. So all you're looking for is someone who wants what you want and they want it with you. And I'm sorry to keep going back to that. It's such a basic statement. But we oftentimes just land on the wrong person. We want somebody that appears that they want us, but they don't. Breadcrumbing is supposed to be able to help you to discern who is a looker from a buyer. It is supposed to give you a course of action that shows you instead of breadcrumbing you, people make concrete plans. I know there are a lot of people who don't like to make a concrete plan these days. They don't like to box themselves into, well, I'll see you Saturday, but at least have them be willing to see you and see you in a way that is mutually beneficial to you, not when they call. Okay. So any other questions? And if not, I'm going to go into 10 minutes of answering your questions as best I can here. Cody. Hi, Cody. How are you doing? Thank you for the super chat. What do you want to ask me? So you guys, when you do the super chat, actually write your question so I can see it. John Gallagher. I adore you. You've written me some wonderful comments. Thank you so much for this. I'm really excited about this. Um, now, some of you, your comments are being blocked, not by me, but I think they don't allow swearing. So if you can clean that up, maybe we can get to you, Brett, and some of the other people. Why do women pursue that aren't interested just the same way anybody would? Um, there are people who are confused and think they want you in the moment. There are people who want anyone to pay attention to them. There are people who only want you to adore them and they've got no intention of ever being with you. This is what breadcrumbing is and we want to call it out. If you have to ask about it, think of all the patterns that you've seen with that person. You guys, this is great personal homework. Think of a person who breadcrumbed you. Do a bit of analysis on a sheet of paper. What did they do? What did they say? What are the patterns that you can see? How does it look consistent? Then you can start to see it because it's kind of the same pattern with a little bit of changes internally. Okay, let me see. Okay, John G says a person can say no without being a breadcrumber. Absolutely. The difference is reciprocity, give alternatives. Yes, yes, and yes. Stick with it and make it important. I love that. Um, let's see, Victoria. Met a guy online a couple of months ago. We chatted a few times on the phone, sent me beautiful post texts here and there. Uh, he is somewhat of a designer, was stuck in Arizona. Yeah, I'm stuck in Arizona too. And I wanted a designer. You guys, all this furniture is going out. So if you see me in a metal back chair, you're going to know what's going on. Um, this is unique to our time period. All of you, people sniff like the dogs at the park and they walk away. There are people who will chat you up online, get you excited, and then drop you. It is whimsical. This is why when we live in a time period of absolute confusion, it has never been more important than for you to be clear on what you want. 
whatever you want and state it as clearly as possible and let this prospective date of yours know who you are and set the rules of engagement. I've had numerous conversations last week. Almost all of my clients were giving me a scenario and I'd ask them, how did they begin the relationship? How did they set the rules of engagement? Like, it would be really wonderful if everyone said in the beginning, listen, we're just getting to know each other. We might not like each other. Listen, I, nobody wants to be rejected, but can we make an agreement that if we don't fancy each other and we need to part, we can just say, you know, I don't think this is going to work for me. And then we part. That's called honesty. And nobody wants to be honest. But if you can start with finding a form of communication that works with your prospective partner where you allow each other an out, you might say that to somebody who's chatting you up online. Listen, I'd like to make concrete plans. I'd like to, well, if we're sequestered, let's have a date. Let's have cocktail hour at five o'clock together. Let's watch a movie together. Let's do something. You're not interested? Okay, I'm interested in people who are interested. You're looking for somebody who's ready, willing, and able to be in a relationship if that's what you want. If you want another design, you need to be precise and explain to people what it is you're trying to create and how you would like that person to participate with you in your unique design that works for you. Okay, got a few more minutes. I want to answer everything here. Um, uh, Braulio, thank you so much for your contribution. You are so X viewing my IG stories. Is that a form of breadcrumbing? Okay, complicated because I don't know what you had with your ex. Your ex is interested. Maybe, did you break it off with them or did they break it off with you? Because if you broke it off with them, they may be hunting to see if you're saying something. You guys cannot believe the decryption I have had to go through in reading text messages and stories on IG, Snapchat, stuff like this. There is so much covert communication done within a story. There is so much covert communication that is done, things that you know are directed toward you. So your ex is still interested in staying in the game. Your ex is still wanting to know what you're doing. Your ex could be doing it because they want to be diplomatic. If they're liking your stories, they could be making nice, nice at the end of a relationship. You have to judge these questions on what you know of that person, how they've interacted with you and how you think they are dispositionally. Are they taunting you? Were they that kind of person who would taunt you and lead you on? only to hurt you? Were they somebody who got involved with you and got really confused and it kind of didn't work out and now they don't want to completely cut contact because it wasn't that they didn't like you. It's just that they didn't see it happening for them. And so that's oftentimes why they follow us on social media. And I admit that is really confusing for all of us. Um, Anna, hey, you're a big help to everyone. Anna, thank you so much. Let's see. Um, B. Oh, B. Ray. I know this name. I know this name. This is so exciting, you guys. Um, I love the way you talk. You're so smart and authentic. B, thank you so much. Sam Hardy, thank you for this. I think you're amazing. Oh, Dasha, I'm interested in someone who is interested in, wow. Yes, it's very, very simple. These, so I'm going to tell you the greatest secret of all. It's simple, but it's hard to do. You guys, this stuff requires mental discipline. We can't always just take what we want and look at them. Oh my God, John G. Are we going to ballet? <laughs> this is a running joke. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God, you guys are so, this is, this is so new to me. This is all new. You know, I've been doing this for years. I do about 300 interviews a year for free. I do hundreds of articles. I've been, I think I've got 420 videos. It is so moving to me to see your gratitude. It really is. Thank you. I don't do this for the money. I don't do it for, how do I say it? I would, if I wanted money, I would have gone to business school and I'd be working at Goldman Sachs because I do a hundred hours for this a week. I'd be doing a hundred hours there and I'd be pulling in some pretty great money. I just hate seeing people in emotional pain. I know how devastating that is. It is so hurtful. It is so debilitating. You can't concentrate. You can't get through the day. Somebody is messing up your head. You feel some way about somebody. They're not giving it back to you. You don't know where you stand. There's no resolution. Sometimes you just have to 
cut that person off and you never had a chance to have closure and say what you want to say. And I want to give you tools to help you on the fly when to have a collection of things where you say, oh, it could be this, it could be that. I will do this, I will try that. To educate you to know when an emotional disaster is coming up, how to avoid it, how to speak through it, how to communicate to your mate. These things are vitally important in today's world because there are so many confused people. You want a certain kind of relationship. I beg you get as clear as you can in your communication by pre-sifting this and explaining it are people going to reject us? Yes. Yes. The right person who wants what you want will say, hmm, tell me more. Let me read a couple more things here. Um, GL, hi, Susan, a few months ago, hang on, hang on here. Uh, when I was seeing a guy, I can notice he is breadcrumbing me. One day he told me he isn't ready for a relationship. Then I cut it off. I feel okay without him. Good logic. You liked him. You thought he liked you. He doesn't want what you want. We don't have to hate them. You know, none of us want to be rejected. And okay, you have to admit it, right? You go on a date and you meet the person in real life, okay? And you look at them, you go, I don't want this, right? And it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. But don't we secretly want them to like us? We want them to want us, but we get to be okay with not liking them. I had a therapist say to me, I don't know that I've shared this with you guys. I had a ther therapist tell me once, um, let's see, do you like everyone you meet? And I said, no, not necessarily. And she said, well, is it okay for people to feel the same way about you? And I went, because, uh, you know, that's human nature. We'd like to be liked. I prefer to be liked. You know, I prefer to be okay with people. But in romance, we got a different tier of requirements. In romance, we're looking for a partner to stand by our side. And we're looking for somebody that we can really work with. We're of the same mindset. We have an agreement to work together and build something beautiful together. And we want to grow. We don't want a static relationship. We want, we encourage being challenged. We incur challenge that will make us grow, but lovingly. Okay. So we have to accept that things are going to ebb and flow. But from the very beginning, it is a filtering process. The filtering process, rather than having everyone come to your door, wouldn't it be better if you say, you know what, I'm actually only looking for redheads. Okay, you're a redhead, you're a redhead. Thank you everyone else for coming, I only want redheads. Or, or if it's, I want marriage. You want marriage, you want marriage. Thank you everyone else, but I want marriage. So if we start filtering in the beginning, we should be getting a better sampling of people that would like what we want. And that's important for us moving forward. It's just so hard. You can't make people change who they are. We can't make them want what we want. And we can't try to convince them. Far too many people get involved in a relationship thinking, I can change them. No. If you do, they will resent you forever. We don't change people. We look for people who want what we want. Okay. You guys are way down here. Let's see. Um, I love the fact that you're talking to each other. Um, so for those of you who did super chat, I adore you. I thank you so much. If I did not answer your question, when I close down here, there'll be a little bit of commentary. If I still didn't see it and didn't get back to you because they stop it in like five minutes, so I can't keep communicating, then, um, like I said, go to the community page or somehow tag me or go to the contact page on, uh, susanwinter.net. Don't, do not go to media. They trash it. I don't see them. Go down to video requests and say, hey, Susan, I was the one that wrote you on Super Chat. Okay. Um, sometimes in the beginning, they whine you and dine you, then they flip. Yeah, Crystal? You know, love is not a safe bet. Got to tell you. Hi, Susan. Is future faking the same as breadcrumbing? Um, yeah, yeah, kind of. Remember, there are multiple terms for the same bad behavior. Each one has a slight variation. Um, breadcrumbing, I see more as a contact issue. I see it more like I don't respond to you than when I feel you're moving away. I send you a little tidbit of, hey, how are you doing? Just checking in. Oh, you look so gorgeous today. You know, some compliment that gets you rerouted to thinking this person does like me. I have a chance with them. Future faking is pretending 
when you're with somebody that you want what they want. Oh, I can see us doing this. Oh, I've got to introduce you to my parents. Oh, next year at this time, we'll be doing this. Normally, it's simply to get a short-term gain for themselves. So that's where it's different, okay? Any other questions, people? I'm just about to go off and then I'll answer everything separately. Uh, Nicole, thank you from Sydney, Australia. I love Australia. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, let's see. What make love to you? Let's see, future cat and mouse. Yes, that's true. Um, hi, Susan. I recently had my heart broken by a woman I love. I felt a connection. She told me the feeling isn't mutual. I was seeing signs, but apparently I'm delusional. How do I handle this? Okay, Spencer, I would love to have 20 minutes with you privately. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Um, not everybody follows through. People think they love us, then they don't. Then something happens. Um, let me see. Hang on. Oh, my God, my glasses. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's see. Um, you're not delusional unless you missed every sign. Did she say, I'm not going out tonight. I don't want to see you. Did she say, uh, please leave me alone. Don't contact me. If you didn't pay attention to those signs, then you weren't listening. But um, how do you handle this? There are times we have to accept Sorry, Robert De Niro. But it is what it is. We have to accept that the person that we want does not want us. They thought they wanted us. They gave us a once over. They looked, they went out with us, and they don't. And it hurts. But we have to accept it. It is the truth. It is what happened. We can hope and wish, but we can't change the person. And so that's why this is a precarious field that has so many questions. What we can try to do is, I always suggest everybody do an overview after a relationship ends. I did this for years, you guys, long before. I never thought I'd be in this career. This was not my career. I, I, I just ended up here and I did not seek this out. So what's so interesting is that I would always review what worked, what didn't work. And I try to put the pieces together for myself so that I knew if I saw a semblance of that again, I'd be going, oh, oh, I see. Could it be this? And each step of the way, I learned to be very specific in my communication. I feel sorry for the guys that enter a relationship with me. They've got to sit through hours of pre-dialogue. It's kind of like reading the terms of service. They got to, they've got to listen to it because I can't eliminate everything just by giving you the information. I can still have my heart broken or I can br break your heart. However, what I try to do is I try to be as clear as possible so that we set up how we're going to treat each other because that's important. Um, you guys, I'm about to sign off. If I didn't answer your question, again, I'm willing to do it. This will open up again for commentary in the replay. And I thank you, those of you who sent in the super chat. This is very new to me. It's kind of exciting. I get a kick out of all of it. So I haven't decided what I'm going to talk about next week. Let's see if I don't lose you. I'm going to open up another screen. Bear with me. I think next on my list is, ah, benching. Do you know what benching is? Kind of like breadcrumbing. I'm going to talk about benching next week. Let me write a note to myself. And I will be putting that on the community page for all of you. And I will be putting out notifications of what we're talking about on all of my different platforms. If you don't know, check me out on Instagram and Facebook and all this stuff, uh, because I do preliminary um, discussions of what I'm going to talk about here. You guys are amazing. You are wonderful supporters. I thank you so much. I am here to answer your questions. Yuri, 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 thank you for the live chats. Now, I need your feedback. If you tell me, Susan... We're on item number 15, and I am so tired of hearing of this bad behavior. I would rather you do three different things in one little conversation. I'll do it. I'm here to serve your needs, okay? If you want all Q&A, I'll do that. I just thought we should have a topic to try to funnel people into a discussion in case that happens to be something, but I am open to what you want to hear from me, okay? Because this is about you right? I'm here to help you as you need me to help you. So I welcome your feedback. I adore, I'm looking at so many hearts. And I don't even have my glasses on. You guys, you are the very best. I wish you well. I'm here for you. 
If you want to chat me up privately, I still, I'm on Magnify, but this has been a very busy week. That's by the minute. You can have an individual session. I will answer as many questions as I can here. And thank you everyone who participated in Super Chat. Um, I really love it. I'm so excited about all these new things that I'm learning. Love all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a fabulous audience. And I'll see you next week on Benching.